Welcome. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to install the Freedom Client app and how to add a recorder. Now, the Freedom app is available to download from the Freedom VMS website. So I'm going to open a web browser and I'm going to navigate to www.freedomvms.com and then I'm going to navigate over downloads and select all downloads. Now there are two versions of Freedom Client, um, the 64-bit and the 32-bit. It's highly recommended that you download the 64-bit. Uh, it allows more HD cameras and UHD cameras if you've got a large HD system. It does require admin rights. The other version is the 32-bit version. Now it can't display as many cameras uh, as the 64-bit version especially in uh, mainstream, but it doesn't require admin rights. Now in summary, the installation steps for the Freedom Client are as follows. We're going to download the Freedom Client app from the website. We're also going to download the CVX device update file from the website. Then we're going to install the Freedom Client app. Then we're going to import the CVX device file into the app. Then, if available, we're either going to import the config file, if we actually have one, which is uh, the easiest uh, method, or we're going to manually add the devices we need to add. But I'm going to, in this example, download the latest version of 4, Freedom Client version 4. I'm also going to download this one here, which is handy to download, the CVX device update file. So I'll commence that download by clicking it's just giving me a warning if I have issues to download and install this um, Visual, Visual C redistributable. You normally don't have to do that. On some older systems uh, it is required. So that's the uh, client has been downloaded. I'm now going to download this. And it already has been downloaded. It's only a small file, this one. So I'm going to commence installation. And I'm just going to click open file and basically I'm just going to go next next here do I agree with the license now it has been installed I can close the application if you did run into any errors at all uh, I would cancel the, the installation and install the uh, this one here, the redistributable um, on your computer and then try the installation again. So, but after successful install it puts an icon on your desktop which is over here. Okay, now that the installation has been completed I can minimize the web page and I can double click on the icon on the desktop over here. And by default there is no password so you just click login now to find out what version you have, uh, what Freedom Client version you have, you can actually click on the menu down the bottom right here and you can click on About. And in my case I've got version 4, so that's how you uh, find out the version that you have. Now for any newer device, you definitely need version 3.7 or above, um, otherwise you'll get a licensing error. So 3.5 is not really suitable for a lot of newer devices. So if you do have uh, the old version 3.5, for example, you really should uh, save the config, then uninstall it and load the newer version, especially if you're getting some new equipment. So once we've got this open, uh, I'm actually going to import that file, the CVX update file that we downloaded as well. So I'm gonna go down here to the menu and I'm going to say import CVX device file and there it is there, this one here, cvxdevice.dat and that has installed. Now we're ready to actually add our recorders. Now there are actually two methods of adding devices or recorders to the Freedom Client software and that's by using a pre-saved config file that someone has saved a previous uh, version of the software configuration or by manually adding the devices. 
it's actually highly recommended that after you've added all your devices that you do save the config that means um, if you have another client PC somewhere you can easily import that without having to manually add the devices again um, so you should keep that config and save it to a uh, safe location I'll quickly show you how to if someone saved a config from the device like your IT department or something like that um, the way you would import your cameras or devices back in you'd click on the menu after you've loaded installed the software and you'd select import system parameters you'd go to where you downloaded it which in my case is my downloads file and you just double click on that file restart now and that will uh, get all your devices back in your cameras so that's using the conf config file method but now I'll show you how to manually add the device now to add a recorder you need a few pieces of information uh, these are the IP address of the recorder the TCP port of the recorder and the username and password so once we have that I'm going to click down here in the setup icon to enter the setup menu then I'm going to click on the device setup tab and I'm going to click the plus sign here okay we're going to start at device name now in my case it is the first recorder so I'm going to call it DVR1 now just a word of warning when you are creating your device names this includes camera names as well uh, there are some rules you can use any alphanumeric character can also use hyphen and underscore but uh, I recommend you do not use forward or backslash in the names that will create issues in the future if you do now I'm going to move on to device type and mine is an Amiga so I'm going to select it from the list if you're unsure on the front of the recorders Amigas usually have an OM hyphen either NVR or DVR or CVR in their part number now I'm going to put the IP address and for private TCP port I'm going to put what it is in my case it's actually the default but uh, it may be different in your case then I'm going to put my username and password for the device now I'm going to click apply now I'm first going to double check that uh, the appropriate values are correct in my case and they are then I'm going to hit the apply button and if it works it'll appear over here like it has in the left hand device list sometimes if it doesn't work the first time so just hit apply again okay so that's it we can actually exit this window now so I'll click close and over here this is called the camera list so I can expose the cameras by clicking on the plus now we want to test to see if we can uh, view our cameras and to do that we can right click over the name of the recorder or device and we can either select preview all cameras in mainstream or preview cameras in substream now the mainstream takes a lot more CPU resources and network resources and the substream is the lower quality version and uses less resources so I'm going to try in mainstream first and all my cameras it's only a four channel recorder in this case have come up now it's very important when all the cameras have come up that uh, if we look down the bottom here at the CPU status that this CPU doesn't exceed around 70 percent in which case I'd recommend changing to the lower resource hungry substream so in my case it's okay uh, it's certainly less than 70% but if it was 70% I'd highly recommend changing it to substream uh, which is the default stream uh, that you can change it to and to do this let's say I wanted to change it to substream not leave it on mainstream I'd click on the setup icon I'd go to device setup I'd highlight my device and then down here under default live video uh, I'll change it from auto to substream and then click apply and close and now if I just close normal video and this time click on substream 
don't know if you can see that, it's actually a lower quality, um, but you can change it to the high quality on the fly. You can just right click and say mainstream, and that will change it. So that's just if you have either um, you don't have enough CPU resources or your network isn't up to uh, uh, streaming multiple HD cameras. Okay, so now that I've got my recorders, and let's say I had multiple recorders here, there are a few optional things that you may wish to do. And these include, you may wish to create a camera group or a number of camera groups from your favorite cameras. Uh, you also may want one of those groups to start up when the software starts. And you may also want to change the way the camera list appears. There are a few options there. And you also may want to change the default download folder path locations or if you have multiple monitors more than one monitor you may wish to change what monitor the freedom cctv app opens on so let's first uh, if i wanted to create a group now obviously i've only got a four channel recorder here let's say i had more cameras i changed to a different uh, tile layout to accommodate my cameras and to make sure it doesn't exceed you've got a Look at the CPU usage, that it doesn't exceed your CPU usage. And if I had more devices, I'd actually drag each camera into those empty tiles. And then when I'm happy with those cameras, you now I'm just going to change back to a four-way lay layout uh, for my example. And you just right-click on one of the tiles and select Create uh, Group from Layout. And call it what you like. I'll leave it as Group 1, but you could say uh, car park cameras for example so I'm just going to click OK now if I wanted to have that group start automatically I'll actually click on the setup icon down the bottom right here then under multi monitor and where it says master and playback I'm going to select it so it opens that group of cameras by default click apply while I'm actually here, I'll just uh, explain. Um, so this is the 64-bit, which supports up to uh, four monitors, three of which can be live view. Uh, another option you do have is actually changing what, if you have multiple monitors, what monitor the client, the Freedom client, appears on. For example, if I wanted to appear on uh, monitor one, for example, in this case, I'd say run here and master and playback. And then I'll change it that way um, and you can create more groups and you can have uh, two of these opening different groups so that's how you change uh, if you don't want it to open on your main monitor for example now in my case it is and I can close that that means when the software starts that uh, group will start automatically another option you have in relation to the camera list See how by default uh, we have a recorder, and then if we click the plus, we've got the cameras under that uh, recorder name. Some people like removing the recorder from the equation. You can do that on the fly by just right clicking and selecting show camera list only. But if you like, um, when the software starts, a lot of people like having this uh, list just showing the cameras. If you wanted to do this again, we go back to the setup, and then you click on the advanced tab down the bottom here. And we select this display only camera list. We tick that, apply, and restart. And you see our cameras are now starting automatically, and it's just showing the camera list itself up here. Now, another thing you may want to do going into setup is to change the download location. So at the moment, um, these are my download paths. By default, usually puts it on whatever your documents uh, location is. Now, just a word of warning: um, every time Freedom starts, it checks the location of these paths if they're still valid. Now, if you receive an error uh, similar to this, I'll just show you on the screen here, the following path is no longer valid. That usually occurs either when you've selected a USB device um, as your path and it's no longer plugged in, or um, if you've choose a network location, now by default, Freedom, uh, you make an error with uh, network or virtu virtual uh, 
folder locations. Now there is a workaround for map drives, uh, which is beyond the scope of this video. But if your uh, IT person searched for um, uh, mapped network drives are not showing in elevated programs, should give them a uh, solution to that. So to fix that error, you would just change, you'd browse this to a location on your local computer um, and just change it to that. That's how you change uh, the path locations. You'd repeat that for each of these three. Now, after you have configured the software the way you like it and added all your recorders, uh, you should save a copy of the config. And to do this, we click on the hamburger menu down the bottom here. And we select backup system parameters. And you see I've got an existing one here. You can give it a meaningful name. I like putting the date on the end of it. So let's say it was the eighth month or the eighth day and save. So that's it, you've saved it and you should save that to a location other than your uh, PC, like an external USB that uh, in case your PC dies or something like that. Okay, that's about it. That wraps up the video. Thanks for watching.